Let's finish up by learning to render our 3D scenes into final images. Now what we've been looking at to this point is what Maya provides as a real-time preview using Viewport 2.0. So it's being able to, it's able to calculate kind of lights and shadows and things like that, but for our final movie or TV show or animation or whatever it is that we're doing, we'll likely want to pre-render that out unless we're working in some sort of a game engine. What that means is Maya will take all the details and data that we have making up our 3D scene and calculate a very high quality image that we can use as frames for our final project. So let's take a look at how we can do that. We've got the lights all set up. We've got a rendering shelf here. and We've also got a rendering menu set that we can access, which will change some of the menu items. In order to actually bring up our render view, we can hit this button here. And that'll bring up our render view. This is where we can view the images that we're rendering out. You can see here that we're using mental ray to render, but there are different renderers available. Let's render out an initial image by clicking this button on the left hand side. Maya will now go in, calculate everything from the lights to the materials to the geometry and render out an image of that in our render view. You can see that happening little by little here as we progress through that. So there's our final image with those current settings. Let's see if we can change some of these settings. So we'll come up to the render settings, which is this icon right here, and that'll bring up these settings. Under the common tab, you can come in and change your file output. So if you wanted to output this as another output your images as uh, different types, you can do that here. If you're doing an animation, you can choose a frame range. We can also change the image size. So if we'd like to render an image that's a little bit bigger, we can change that size. So it could be bigger, it could be smaller. We could do a you know, 2K square, if we wanted a square kind of map, or if we're working in HD, we could do something like that. And that allows you to change that. Now you're working with presets here, but you can also put in width and height values um, at that point as well. Now that we've changed the size of the frame, it would be nice to know what it is we're actually going to be rendering. So to see that in our viewport, we can go into view and let's come down to our camera settings and let's choose a resolution gate. That'll show us the size of the image that's actually going to be created. We also have some buttons up here where we can change that. So we have a gate mask that we can turn off and on and we can also turn the gate on and off as well. Now when we hit render, it'll render a little bit of a different size image because we've changed that preset. Now depending on your scene, rendering can actually take a little bit of time. I've paused the video to kind of speed it up here. Let's say that we want to start to make some changes to this scene, maybe change the lighting a little bit. And I want to compare the way that it is now with the way that it's going to be when I make the change. We can save rendered images by coming up here and just choosing keep image. That'll bring up a little bar at the bottom and now we can go in and make a change. Let's select one of these lights and let's just change the color. We'll change this to kind of a blue color. Now let's go back into our render view and let's re-render. I'll pause once again. Here's our render with the light changed. Now by choosing this slider, we can go back and forth between the two versions and see the difference. This will help us decide the look that we really want to go for. Now in some cases, when we want to make changes, we want it to go a little bit faster than just going in and having to re-render the entire thing the whole time. So in that case, we can use a couple of different things. We can render just a region. And so we can come in and render a region, which in this case is just the whole thing, or we can just render a part of it by dragging a box around a particular section of our image. Then we can hit render region and only that part will update. There you can see the rendering is happening only inside of that box. Now when we make a change, for instance on that same light, let's set our color maybe to something more greenish. Now when we go back in and 
hit render region, it'll just update that inside of that region that we selected. So make things go a little bit quicker. Now, if we'd like our render to update automatically, we can use IPR. Let's choose IPR now. And now we can choose just a section again, just by dragging across a particular section. So let's choose this section right down here. IPR will go in and create a render of just that section, and it will automatically update as we change things within our scene. For instance, let's brighten up this light. Let's go in and change the color. You can see that update here. Let's change the color back. So let's go back to kind of a reddish color. And you can see IPR begin to update almost immediately. So this is a great way to go in and tweak different settings that we might have and be able to see those update on the fly. You can see that updated now. If you want to look at a different section, all you have to do is drag a region across a particular section, and you'll see that section update. And all this is happening inside of this render view. Let's look at rendering our final images in Maya. And we've actually reached the end of our time together, so I want to thank you so much for joining us as we took a look at getting started with Maya. Now we started out with the interface and creating models and moving them around our scene with animation. You also learned about adding materials and lights and rendering out final scenes, but that's really just the tip of the Maya iceberg. If you'd like to go into more depth on a particular subject or get a much broader overview of Maya, we'd encourage you to check out our Introduction to Maya course at digitaltutors.com. <laughs>